What's up my beard bros, Beard Maniac here with a quick flash before the video. If you are watching this, that means I had to split the draft video into two parts and you are currently watching part one. Part two will be up later, so I hope you stay around for that. And the reason why I would split up this, split these up if I had to would be because Share Factory, the app that I use on my PS4 to record or to put videos together, wouldn't allow the video to be that long. Anyway guys, hope you enjoy it. Like I keep saying in the video, don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe. If you do have criticism, try to keep it as, I should say, not as holish as possible. Try to be as clean with your criticism. Anyway guys, thank you for watching. Do enjoy. I hope to see you in the next one. Peace. What's up my beautiful bros? Pretty Maniac here with a special project the day before the draft. This is going to be a seven round mock draft of the 2018 NFL Draft, which airs Thursday at 8 p.m. Now, just want to say, Patriot, uh, Robert Gronkowski just announced he'll be back for next year, so that's good. Does that affect my draft at all? No. This is going to be picks 1 through 256, but once we get in, into the second round, I'm not really going to go into detail just to make this video quicker. First round is probably going to be the only one to go detail on. I'm going to give the team, the position, the draft pick position, the team, the player, the position, and then the college they played for. Now, I do apologize if I mispronounce names. Also, if you have Madden 18, you can now play with the new rookies as they are drafted, which should be an awesome addition to the Madden Ultimate Team thing right there. If you guys want to know specifically who your team drafted, let me know in the comment section down below what team you root for, and I will try to put together a list for you specifically. Let's say Washington Redskins, all the players, just the Redskins drafted, stuff like that. I will reply to you as soon as possible. I have the list right in front of me, so it shouldn't be too hard to do. Now, let's get into it. Just also want to note, leave a like, comment, subscribe if you are new. I want this channel to be known for gaming and sports, so stay tuned. This video... It's going to be long, I do warn you, but it should be good. I want to honestly know your honest opinion. Try not to be too harsh or too mean. If you do have criticism, try to word it nicely. That would be greatly appreciated. Now, also, this does not account for any draft, draft day trades, just where that is so unpredictable. I just want to keep it as neat and as predictable as possible. This is where I see people going if the draft ends like it is now with no trades but there will be trades there will be trades and we start with the Browns with a number one overall pick I have them selecting Sam Darnold quarterback at a USC now to me I feel like with the reports look because this was done after the reports of Baker Mayfield being in serious consideration for the number one overall pick from the Browns with this though I've, I still feel Sam Darnold is their favorite, just the way they treated him at his pro day, the way they treated him at the draft. I just feel like the Baker Mayfield thing is a screen, and they, they're they just doing that to gauge if they can get a trade, because let's say the Jets at number three are interested in Baker Mayfield. If they, if they feel like the Browns are going to pick Mayfield, they might trade up the three and give the Browns something else as well. So that could be interesting ammunition. But I believe Sam Darnold will be the number one overall pick. He's a solid prospect, still needs some work. But in the system of Cleveland, I think he can do a lot, especially growing into a system with receivers like Jarvis Landry and Josh Gordon. It should be interesting to watch. Now with that pick, with number two Overall pick, the Giants select Saquon Barkley, running back out of Penn State. Now, I struggled with this one tremendously. There's a lot of people who can go here at number two. Just like last year, there's a lot of picks who could go high up. I personally, I think I was thinking about Quentin Nelson could be a good pick here. The Giants do need offensive line help. Um, Josh Rosen could have gone here. Bradley Chubb could very well go here as well, where they did trade away Jason Pierre-Paul. That was along my thinking before. But I feel like Saquon Barkley, just for the fact that with the signing of Nate Solder for the Giants, the Giants are in like a win-now mode. Let's get Eli Manning one last ring. And what that entails to me is getting him as much help as possible. And Saquon Barkley, is not I don't think he's as great and as once in a generation as everyone thinks. I think he's good. I think he's really good. I think he'll be a nice addition to the Giants. Will they miss out on getting their franchise backup quarterback for now? Yes, but if Eli can put together a couple solid more campaigns, maybe three, something like that, 
then maybe they can hold off to draft another one. It should be interesting to see. And with a third overall pick, I have the Jet New York Jets, J-E-T-S, Jets, selecting the star playboy, whatever you want to call him, interesting man himself, Baker Mayfield, quarterback out of Oklahoma. Now, he has attitude. He has charisma. I think he can handle the New York Jets media and stuff like that. Playing in an interesting town like that should be, or I don't know how he'll handle it. I do think... That Todd Bowles will do a good job coaching him. I think he'll be in a good system with a really good veteran quarterback with Josh McCown, who can lead him and grow, help grow him personally over the next year. With a wide rec- or I should say, with a young players on that offense, it should also help as well. I do like Maker Baker Mayfield to the Jets. I think it's one of his better team fits, and it should be interesting to see how that plays out, especially against defenses like the Bills and the Dolphins. I think he might get a chance to play this year, but I think he'll he I think he'll sit till next year. And with a number four overall pick, the Browns select Bradley Chubb, defensive end out of North Carolina State, one of the best defensive talents in the draft for sure. Pairing him up with Miles Garrett and Jamie Collins and Og, I want to say Emmanuel Ogba, but I'm not sure quite sure what his name is. This is, to me, a great pick for them if Bradley Chubb does survive this long. If not, someone could very well trade up with the Browns to select Bradley Chubb if they want him that bad. But I like this move. The only negative to me about this one, like thinking about it, is... it. Well, with the signing of Carlos Hyde, the Browns don't really have a huge, huge need for Saquon Barkley. This makes their defense stronger, but... Like, looking a few years down the road when them having to give big contracts to Miles Garrett, Bradley Chubb, and the likes of them, it will be interesting to see for sure how that turns out. But I think this could give them a dynamic pass or pass rush duo to put up with the O-lines of Pittsburgh and especially could exploit the rebuilding O-line of the Bengals. And it could put the Browns into a win a couple, a few more games now than people expected them to kind of thing. And with a number five overall pick, we have the Denver Broncos going with a quarterback, Josh Rosen out of UCLA. Now, I had a few people here as well. I had Quint Nelson could very well go to the Broncos. I even at one point was thinking Denzel Ward to the Broncos. But for now, we have Josh Rosen. I think he's a good quarterback with a good arm. I think with John Elway at GM, even if... um. Case Keenum is only there for a year or so. Josh Rosen should have a good enough time growing in the Broncos system. Their defense still looks to be good for a few years. And I like the idea of Josh Rosen growing for a year while Denver continues to improve its offensive line. I think throwing him in this year could be a mistake with how many holes they still have on the offense. But I do like the potential of Josh Rosen in the Denver Broncos system. It kind of... Gives me memories of Peyton Manning when he first joined the Broncos. I'm not saying he's going to be Peyton Manning, but it gives me ideas of what could possibly be. Now, there are definitely a lot of other players who could go there, and it's fair to say that Josh Rosen most likely won't go to the Broncos because if the Broncos... Broncos probably will trade down, to be honest. But... Or they're open to trading down, I should say. If they stay at five, though, I feel like they pick quarterback because I feel like that's the only reason they stay instead of getting more draft picks. At number six, we have the Indianapolis Colts, who did trade down with the Jets at number three, selecting offensive guard Quentin Nelson out of Notre Dame. Now, Andrew Luck should be back this season, hopefully, with a shoulder injury. And one thing you have to do for Andrew Luck is you have to improve that offensive line dramatically to help him stay around longer and prevent him from getting hurt. And how do you do that? You select possibly the best offensive line talent in this draft with Quentin Nelson. He's an outstanding prospect. He has good athleticism, size, and length. He should help in the interior of that old line for sure. Should improve that run game with, I believe, Marlon Mack in the backfield. It should be an interesting experiment to see, especially with the new Colts coach, Frank Reich, I believe his name is, the former offensive coordinator of the Eagles, gets a nice offensive player with his first pick in the draft. It should be interesting to see. I think he could definitely be a franchise player for at least 10, 12 years for the Giant, for the Colts, and I, I like that overall pick. With the seventh overall pick, we have the Bucks selecting Derwin James, safety out of Florida State University. Now, I I was I was um 
the conflicted here, I should say. The Bucks need help on defense. They had a lot of injuries last year. They need I, they had a lot of people they could go for right now. Because on the board, if this shakes out like it is, they have Denzel Ward, Minka Fitzpatrick, Rakan Smith, Tremaine Edmonds. All of them could help on the defensive side. But I believe that Derwin James, how he plays at safety, what he can give to the element for the Bucs. He can play the run. He can play the pass. He can cover, I think, quite well. With some good coaching, he could be an outstanding player. I think he fits the Bucks system, and I think he gives them a little boost on defense, especially when you're going up against quarterbacks like Matt Ryan, Cam Newton, and Matt and Drew Brees twice a year for the next few years. It's going to give this guy a true test. I think he's up for it. I do like his size as well. Another bonus. With the eighth overall pick, we have the Chicago Bears selecting Denzel Ward, cornerback out of Ohio State. Now, in my previous mock drafts, I don't think I give Denzel Ward enough credit. I believe at one point in my first mock draft, he was around the 20th overall pick, but he's one of the best corners in the draft. He had an outstanding, pro he had an outstanding combine, at least for me. I watched the drills and everything like that. Out of Ohio State, he did play against tough opponents. He did play in against good systems like that. I do believe he could thrive in the Chicago Bears system as well. I struggled here just for the fact I felt like the Bears could go more offense, but I feel like when you have such a good corner talent like Denzel Ward on the board, you go there. Another another player they could go for here is Minka Fitzpatrick, who can play safety or corner or maybe a linebacker. But I believe getting that backfield against cornerbacks who are capable, like Aaron Rodgers, Kirk Cousins, Matt Stafford, I think, having a corner, a, maybe a possible franchise corner for years to come is extremely important. I think that's why they picked Enzo Ward. And with that, the ninth overall pick opens up for the 49ers, selecting Minka Fitzpatrick, a, sa a defensive back out of Alabama. I don't feel like calling him a safety or corner because I believe, depending on who, where, what position his coach wants him to play, I believe he could play, be capable at both. I think he fits very well in the 49ers system. He gets to learn how to be a DB from the likes of Richard Sherman, which I believe could help tremendously. He could very well be a day one starter in San Francisco. I believe he actually will be. Tremendously improves their defense. Well, not tremendously, improves their defense overall, I should say. With teams like LA and Arizona with the offenses of like David Johnson, Larry Fitzgerald, and... Todd Gurley and stuff like that. You want a safety who's capable in the running pass. I believe Minka brings extreme athleticism as well to the position. He could be a great addition to any defense. I think he's one of the rare players in this draft to where you could say no matter which one of the 32 teams he goes on, he could contribute day one. Now, with the 10th overall pick, we have the Raiders selecting Raquan Smith, inside linebacker out of Georgia. Now, in my last two mock drafts, I believe I had Smith going to the 49ers, but... I think the 49ers, with the signing of Richard Sherman, do like to improve the backfield a little bit more. So that opens up the Raiders to draft Raquan Smith to add to the linebacker position. The Raiders' defense was absolutely horrendous this year. I think Raquan is a player that fits the John Gruden mold. And I think he can be a starter day one. If not a starter, he's definitely going to be in the depth chart day one. He's going to be playing. He's going to see action. I think he'll be a starter towards the end of the year. Um... I think he's one of those athletic, tough guys who would probably impress Gruden as a player. I think this would be a perfect fit. Good compliment to good compliment to what they already have. And I believe it's I believe it's just a good addition. They could also go other places here, but linebacker I feel is a good need for the run and a linebacker who can cover is also crucial here. With a number 11 overall pick, we have the Miami Dolphins selecting Tremaine Edmonds, outside linebacker out of Virginia Tech. Now, I struggled with this one because I had thoughts of the Dolphins could select a backup quarterback for for Ryan Tannehill, but I believe they have enough faith in Tannehill to at least wait on a quarterback. They could select offensive linemen where they got rid of Indominican Sue, but I believe the middle of their defense is still weak. You play against good slot receivers and tight ends like Julian Edelman and Gronkowski. You play against tough line or tough running backs like LaShawn McCoy. So I believe a linebacker can be extremely, extremely important. And I think the Dolphins snatch up Tremaine Edmonds. He has great athleticism, good size. He had a good combine, good pro day, I believe. From Virginia Tech, he plays in a decent system at least. I think he's very capable and adds an element to their defense, which is nice and they could use. Other than that, 
Uh, they could definitely go a few places here. A few places. I know a lot of people have them selecting Josh Allen or someone like that, but I just I just feel they don't pass up on Edmonds because I feel like Edmonds could be that one talent to where if you pass up on him and you let him slip, it could end up biting you in the bum. At number 12 overall, we have the Buffalo Bills selecting Josh Allen, quarterback out of Wyoming. Now, I'm aware they signed A.J. McCarron to at least, uh, I think, a two-year deal, I believe was what it was. But Josh Allen. Now, he's probably one of the most talented quarterbacks in the draft. Accuracy, accuracy in college was a huge issue. Has one of the strongest arms. Just a cannon. Now, the reason why I think this fits in Buffalo is they have a decent system. They have good young wide receiver in Zay Jones. This gives Josh Allen a year to grow. At least work on his accuracy for a couple of years. That way, when he gets a chance to start, Zay Jones is more experienced. They can improve that offense a little bit more. And I think he'll be in a good place in that system to maybe succeed for the next eight, nine years. I like this pick. I like that the Bills don't trade away or like trade up just to nab him. I believe if they can get him here, they'd be happy. And at number 13, we have the Washington Redskins, a pick that I have been criticized for in the past just because the Redskins, their fan base is passionate. And they are, overall, I think they're a good team. They could use a few positions at least. But I have them selecting Vita Vey, defensive tackle out of Washington. I like what he did at the Combine. I like what he does overall. And I think he adds an element to that pass rush and that run-stopping group of Washington that really makes him a threat, at least in the NFC East. Does it make him favorites? No. It does not make him favorites. It honestly doesn't to me make them one of the top two teams but at least getting Vita Vey up the middle does help you against players like Jay Ajayi from running north south and it provides you a little bit boost to the inside especially against strong offensive lines like Dallas like Philly I like that pick now originally when I was thinking through this I was thinking Deron Payne but I like Vita Vey just a little bit more and probably going to be criticized for that just a little bit. At number 14, we have the Green Bay Packers selecting Marcus Davenport, defensive end at a UTSA. Now, with Marcus Davenport, he's got athleticism, good speed. He's a good college player. Will he transition into the pros? Who knows? But one of the greatest criticisms of the Packers during the Aaron Rodgers era, I should say, is the fact that they have a lack of a clutch defense. They've had some decent defenses at least, but... Their defenses haven't been as clutch as Aaron Rodgers would need to at least hold the lead and stuff like that. Adding Marcus Davenport, I believe, adds an element to that defense that makes them definitely more competitive, especially when you have teams like the Vikings, who, as talented as they are, who, as talented as they look, it gives them an element to at least try to go up against that offensive line of Minnesota, make it so it's not just a Rodgers versus Minnesota defense matchup, and you can match up with Minnesota's offense as well. I like his rushing capabilities. I like how he can play the run as well. It should definitely be able to. It, should, it will be interesting to see him trying to get after Kirk Cousins and Matthew Stafford and the likes of them. With the number 15 overall pick, a uh, pick I personally didn't want to make until I thought about it a little bit. We have the Arizona Cardinals selecting Calvin Ridley, wide receiver out of Alabama. Now, personally, I'd, I'd like to see Calvin Ridley go to a team like the Panthers or the Bills at 22 or 24. I just don't think he's going to last that long. I don't think he necessarily fits with the Cardinals, but I think they will pick him overall if they see him remaining there at 15. Other places they could very well go, uh, Lamar Jackson, maybe trade down, get Rudolph or something like that. I don't think you can trust Sam Bradford or Glennon as a backup here, so quarterback would be a decent choice. But I believe with a wide receiver group and knowing Larry Fitzgerald is on one of his last legs, Calvin Ridley is a solid option. He's a very solid receiver, one of the best ones in the draft, I think, in my opinion. Now, he doesn't have a huge size, but he does have good speed. He does. He can get the ball. He can get separation. I think it does give him a good number two to Larry Fitzgerald, at least for now. Hopefully he pans through. They haven't had a lot of luck with wide receiver draft picks in the last five, six years. But who knows? They could go defense here and replace Tyron Matthew. But we'll see come draft day. They could trade up as well, trade down. Who knows with the Cardinals. 
especially with their new head coach. At number 16, we have the Baltimore Ravens selecting offensive tackle Mike McGlinchey out of Notre Dame. I think this might be too low for him. I think McGlinchey might be one of the people people trade up for to go get, but I think he adds a good depth to the offensive line for the Baltimore Ravens. He's one of the best tackle play, tackle prospects, in, or at least on the big board, that I used. He does help protect Joe Flacco, which is extremely important. Um, the Ravens offense looked absolutely inept at points last season. Adding Willie Sneed on the offense as well helped to make this pick a little different. Because I believed without that, without getting Des Bryant, they could have used receiver with the number one overall pick. But solidifying that offensive line is crucial, crucial to having future success. Especially when you have pass rushers like TJ Watt on the edge. Um, Vontez Perfect. And... A possible combination of Bradley Chubb and Miles Garrett. Having a good tackle is very critical, and I like McGlinchey. I like Harbaugh being Harbaugh being able to coach him. I think he's a good fit. And then in the number 17 overall pick, we have the Los Angeles Chargers selecting Leighton Vander X X Eck. I think is how you pronounce his name. Outside linebacker out of Boise State to pair with Joey Bosa and Ingram and the likes of them provides. A truly fearsome front seven, I believe, in my opinion. A good linebacker talent. I think the Chargers... I think the char. My feeling is the Chargers like him. And he's who they're going to target, but it's hard to tell. He's one of those linebackers that could go higher or could fall or to the early second round. It's, But I believe, he, I believe he goes to the Chargers. I believe it's a good addition. Front seven would be fearsome. Fearsome, especially in the division when you have to start stop Patrick Mahomes and Kareem Hunt, and you have the Broncos who have that questionable offensive line, and you have the Raiders who have a new head coach and that questionable just everything. Should give them, it should help them get control of that division, depending on how good Mahomes is. And with the number 18 overall pick, with the Seattle Seahawks selecting Harold Landry, defensive end out of Boston College. Now, I thought of a few other people here. I thought of maybe a Deron Payne kind of player I thought of a maybe an offensive lineman like Colton Miller or James Daniels but I ended up settling with Harold Landry for the fact that the, I believe the pass rush I believe that would be very crucial for the San Francisco 49 or for the Seattle Seahawks with quarterbacks like Jimmy Garoppolo Jared Goff and Sam Bradford you want someone who can rush the pass or put pressure on them especially because especially when you have young players like that or injure often Shaky players like Sam Bradford, it's good to get pressure. I could, I could, I, I'm leaning towards the Seahawks picking on offense here, but I think with Harold Landry, you take him when you can. And I think he just provides that boost to the Seahawks that Michael Mc, Malik McDowell never provided due to injury. And I think, I believe they released him or are planning to as of now, if they haven't already. With a 19th overall pick, the Cowboys. The Dallas Cowboys select wide receiver Cortland Sutton out of SMU, Southern Mississippi University, I believe is what SMU stands for. Now, he has good size. He, I think he pairs well with Allen. Now, does he replace Des Bryant? No. Should the Cowboys go def defense here? Probably. They, should, they could probably go Deron Payne or maybe a Josh Jackson or... Maybe even a top to Von Bryant. But I like Sutton here. I think this might be a reach for Sutton. But in the Cowboys system with Dak Prescott, you don't want him having, like, he literally has not much at wide receiver right now besides a few players. I mean, Cole Beasley's okay. And, um, God, I I've, that name slipped in my head, but the, I think he improves the wide receiving core for the Dallas Cowboys and gives uh, gives them a young target that can grow with Dak and Ezekiel for the next few years. That should be good. I think he he could pan out to be a solid wide receiver for the next few years, or next like five six years at least. Now the number twenty overall pick, we have the De the Detroit Lions selecting Deron Payne, defensive tackle out of Alabama. I struggled with this pick as well, but I think interior lineman is could be crucial to the Lions. As I keep saying, with that division, with the solid offensive line as the Minnesota Vikings, you want to have 
a defensive line who can stop the run with a Dalvin Cook there, maybe even a Ty Montgomery in Green Bay. You want that inside presence. I think Deron Payne gives you a solid option at defensive tackle. He's got good size. He's got decent speed. He's got decent hands. I think being coached up by Green Bay, going up against Aaron Rodgers on practice every day, could do him some good. Or going up against Aaron Rodgers in games could give do him some good in practice. Going up against Matthew Stafford in practice will give him some good experience. I think he could be a franchise tackle for the next 10 years. He definitely has that potential. He's coming from a good system with a good coach in Nick Saban, so he can, I think he can handle the pressure of the NFL, but it should be nice to be to actually see it happen. And with a 21st overall pick, I know I'm going slow, we have the Cincinnati Bengals selecting James Daniel Center out of Iowa. Now, I didn't, I never originally had centers going this high, but I believe the Bengals improving their open offensive line is extremely, extremely important. You might have Joe Mixon, you might have A.J. Green, John Ross, and stuff like that, and Andy Dalton at quarterback, but until you improve that offensive line, that offense doesn't necessarily threaten me. Now, if you improve that offensive line and you draft a couple of solid offensive line prospects, that de defense, that offense could very well become a scary threat, especially if Eifert can stay healthy. Now, James Daniels, he's, he's a solid, solid offensive line prospect. I like him at center. I think he could be capable of playing guard with the right coaching. Whether Marvin Lewis is the right one to teach him to do that, who knows. I think he's a good fit. I think he is good for that franchise. And with a 22 over the 22nd pick in the draft, the Bills select quarterback, cor cornerback out of Iowa, Josh Jackson, to pair with Tredavious White. I think that it would be a deadly combo in Buffalo. With their earlier pick, with their earlier pick of Josh Allen, I think they now go to the defensive side of the ball. They could very well go offensive line here. They could go with Colton Miller, but I like Josh Jackson. I like his speed, athleticism. He had a decent combine. Now Josh Jackson could very well be gone by now, or he could slide. He's one of those players to me that could go top 15, or could go bottom of the first round. But I do think he is a first round talent. And I do think he does solidify that Bills defense, especially when you have wide or when you, especially when you're going up against Brady, Tannehill, and McCown. You want good presence on the backfield, and it should it should be a solid player, solid player for the Bills. Like just like Tre'Davious White was. Tre'Davious White had an outstanding season last year. And then with the 23rd overall pick, we have the New England Patriots selecting Colton Miller, offensive tackle at a UCLA. I do not know why on this paper I spelled his name with an O at the end instead of an R. Who knows? I was probably really tired. Um, Colton Miller, I believe, is one of those prospects that, coached by Dante Scarnecchia, can be better than what he's projected to be. I think he could be a very good Nate Solder replacement, whether it takes a year or two. In Scarnecchia's system, I think it's very well possible. I think he can protect the blind side of Brady if asked to. I don't think he necessarily will be right away. But if he has good camps and stuff like that, he could very well be a day one starter for the Patriots. They do have decent success with their t tackle prospect draft picks. They could very well go quarterback here. Because at this point, if it goes like this, Lamar Jackson, Mason Rudolph, people like them are still on the board. Patriots do need to pick a quarterback. But I believe they can get Colton Miller, solidify that offensive line, and it should help improve that offense. Well, not, not necessarily improve it compared to last year because you did lose Solder, but it should help patch a hole from a loss of Nate Solder. More than just replacing him with your um, second-tier guys that you already had. And with the 24th overall pick, we have the Carolina Panthers selecting Jer Alexander, cornerback out of Louisville. I think it gives them a corner presence that they haven't ha really had since Josh Norman, I think. On offense, yes, I think Cam Newton could very well use a wide receiver. That's why I made the statement that I would like to see him have Calvin Ridley added towards the bottom of the, towards this part of the draft. But with Ridley gone, I think they go defense. I think um, getting Jared Alexander is extremely important for them. Defensively, their offense is already deadly with Cam Newton and Christian McCaffrey and Greg Olson. This gives them at least a lift on defense, especially when going up against Breeze. Matt Ryan and a Jameis Winston. Well, Jameis Winston, eh, not as good as Matt Ryan, Drew Brees, but could still tear your defense apart when it needs when it's lacking that corner. This patch is a hole. This patch is a hole. And with the 25th overall pick, we have the Tennessee Titans selecting Malik Jefferson, outside linebacker out of Texas. I think the Titans 
to me, are one of those teams that on paper, they just look outstanding. Outstanding. They added um Malcolm Butler in the secondary. I originally thought they might pick corner at this position, but selecting Malcolm Butler in free agency, I believe they go linebacker here. Their defensive line looks nice. Their offensive line looks nice. Wide receivers look decent, so I don't think you waste a 25 overall pick on that. They don't need really a quarterback with Marcus Mariota playing well. And with running back, they have Derrick Henry, so they don't really need a first-round draft pick on that. I think linebacker is a good need for them. And getting Malik Jefferson out of Texas does add good size, speed, can cover the run, can cover the pass, could improve on that just a little bit, or could improve on that. And I, I believe he might not be a day-one starter, but I believe at least, at least he'll be a good rotation player for them for a few years. Even if he doesn't pan out necessarily, I think he could be a... One of those guys who doesn't get his option picked up, but gets signed by a team because he has that potential. He has good potential. Then, yeah, at number 26, we have the Atlanta Falcons selecting Tevin, Tev, Taven Bryan. I don't know how to pronounce his name. Defensive tackle. Oh, my God. I wrote down his college, but it ended up being spread against, like, five different teams. The five different papers. I do apologize, Taven Bryan. I think you're out of Alabama. I'm not sure. Now, I like what he does to the interior of the defensive line for the Falcons I believe with I believe the Falcons need to get younger there they do have a very young defense as well so getting a rookie there will help when you have to repay those guys soon now offense you could worry about but I like what they have at receiver and running back and quarterback I like what they have at tight end as well and offensive line looks could be a position could be a place of need, so I but I do think their defensive line is also a need. So I think Tavon Bryant does give them that size, gives them that athleticism, that run stopper, who, who with some good coaching from Atlanta, could very well be a very, very, very good run stopper. He is a potential potential to me to be defensive rookie of the year. I think he'll finish in probably top ten of that voting if they actually vote for ten. Probably not. I think it's a good fit. It's questionable. Though, that they could pick someone else who's still available. But at that point, I just think defensive tackle, if you wait until the next round, it could cost you. Especially when you have Tevin Bryan just waiting for you right here. At number 27, what do the Saints need with a 27th overall pick? Well, we have them selecting Hayden Hurst, tight end, I believe, out of South Carolina. I believe is the college he played for. Unless I wrote it wrong, I apologize. These letters are very small, so... If I get confused between schools, it's because I wrote the wrong abbreviation. Hayden Hurst is, an outsta I think, an outstanding tight end prospect. There's a lot of solid tight end prospects in the draft. I just want to go over that real quick. Outstanding tight end prospects in this draft. With the Saints having Kamara and Ingram on the offensive line, with them having Thomas on the outside and Drew Brees, I think the one thing they're kind of missing on the offense is an outstanding tight end prospect. At least, at least a young one. Because Breeze probably has maybe three, four, five years left around there if you want to get predicting. And with Hurst, the next quarterback to come in will have a nice young tight end whose experience get, puts him in a good position to succeed beyond Breeze, I should say. They could also very well go linebacker here or possibly safety. But I like Hurst being the first tight end off the board, going to the Saints, giving Drew Breeze yet another weapon to work with. Especially against the improving defenses in the NFC, you really want to have a good offense. And against like Philly or uh, St. Louis, I think that does give them more depth to, to the system. And with a 28th overall pick, I have the Steelers selecting Rashawn Evans, inside linebacker out of Alabama. I think with the loss of Shazier for at least this year, I do not know how strong he will come back. I don't want to predict he's going to be out for the rest of his career. But still, I think Rashawn Evans gives him a presence inside linebacker. I think when Shazier comes back, if he does, will be a great combo to pair with him. He's a good young talent, and he does to me when I watch him and I see him or see that he's coached by Nick Saban in Alabama. I see what he can do. I'm impressed he's gone up against tough competition. He's played in big games. So I believe a franchise like the Steelers with a history... He can be one of those linebackers that just screams toughness at you. I believe he fits the Steelers system for what they want to do. If not, I believe Mike Tomlin can teach him well enough. I just wish Rashawn Evans could have been taught by the great Dick LeBeau. 
back in LeBeau's prime when he was coaching the Steelers' defense. That would have been awesome to see. With a 29th overall pick, I had the Jags selecting wide receiver out of Maryland, DJ Moore. Now, I struggled with this one as well. Because I was thinking about the Jags offense, and I'm thinking Blake Bortles, they could drop back up quarterback. Do I think they do it this high? Not really, so I didn't go there. Running back, they have obviously Leonard Fournette from last year, so I don't think they go there. They have D.D. Westbrook at wide receiver. They did lose, they did lose Allen Robinson at wide receiver. But So I believe they pick up a wide receiver here. Do I think necessarily D.J. Moore? Not nece it might not be D.J. Moore, but I think he does fit what they want to do. Pairing him up with D.D. Westbrook and some people players like that gives Bortles another speedy receiver to throw to. I think it'll help Bortles improve just a little bit. On defense, I didn't want to go defense for the Jags in the first round because they don't really need an amazing first round talent on defense. Their defense is already solid across the board. So I figured offense here. And with a 30th overall pick with the Minnesota Vikings selecting Will Hernandez, offensive guard out of UTEP. Now, Vikings are almost in the same boat as the Jags. I don't think their defense needs to plug in a lot of holes, but I think offensive line could use some depth in case of injury. I think protecting Kirk Cousins is going to be extremely important, so drafting a young guard for the interior will be important. Will Hernandez is one of the better guard prospects. I don't think he's as good as Quentin Nelson, but I do think he is good indeed. Now, with Dalvin Cook and Kirk Cousins in your backfield having interior line, definitely... Definitely is important. So Will Hernandez, will he probably slip to the second round? I could very well see it. But or, or late in the first round, I don't think he's too much of a reach. He might be a little bit of a reach, but not too much. And with the 31st overall pick, this puts the Patriots in prime position. If you've read reports recently out of the NFL, Lamar Jackson is a popular, popular pick now for the Patriots. They might even trade up to grab him if they have to. He, I guess they hosted him for a workout and were extremely impressed. Now... A lot of people look at Tom Brady, they don't see a mobile quarterback or anything like that. So they're like, how does Lamar Jackson fit in their system? All, to me, all you have to look at is their last quarterback pick in Jacoby Brissett. Now, Lamar Jackson, to me, is Jacoby Brissett 5.0. He can throw better, he can run better, he's more mobile, he's more athletic. Brissett was a good player, but Lamar Jackson's better. Now, even if Brady does play to 45, which is probably very unlikely, but even if Brady plays two, three more years, gives... Lamar Jackson time to just polish that arm like Aaron Rodgers did behind Brett Favre Put, puts pressure on Brady to play better which is also important and once you have to renew his contract you should maybe have a year on his rookie contract before you have to re-sign him so you can see what he's got in the starting role I think it's a great pr pick for the Patriots they need a backup quarterback I think he instantly leaps past Brian Hoyer for ba for the number two spot on the roster. do I think they still keep Brian Hoyer. Just in case. Because you never know with injuries. And I think if Brady were to go down this year. I think they would be decently comfortable. Putting in Lamar Jackson into that offense. Especially with Gronkowski and Julian Edelman. For him to throw to. And with the last draft. Of the last pick of the first round. The Philadelphia Eagles with the number 32 overall pick. Select Connor Williams tackle out of Texas. Offensive tackle out of Texas I should say. Now the Eagles are one of those teams that do have a tight cap so they can't really sign a lot of free agents they actually had to get rid of a lot of people like Torrey Smith and they ha cut Daryl Worley who they traded Torrey Smith for now one of the things Eagles are known for and one of the things that won the Eagles a Super Bowl congratulations Philadelphia in the last season was their outstanding depth and I think Connor Williams is one of those draft picks that just adds outstanding depth here now what do I think realistically happens at this point is I think the Eagles trade this pick away I think maybe the Browns package, maybe the 35th pick and something else to trade up for something to leapfrog someone. Who knows? Um, just overall, no matter where the Eagles pick, they most likely will pick draft depth. I'd like this. They could very well go cornerback here as well. But the Eagles master depth almost like no one else, and it's just outstanding. Now this is the point we start the second round, so I'm, I'm not really going to explain my picks. I'm just going to go through pick by pick as fast as I can to get this video out as soon as I can for you guys. Now we start with a 33rd overall pick. We have the Cleveland Browns selecting Isaiah Oliver, Oliver cornerback out of Colorado to improve that defensive backfield. Um, Jabril Peppers, I will just say this real quick since it's the early in the second round, didn't really pan out as well as I thought he would in Cleveland, so I think this does replace. This also replaces McCourty. 
Uh, is he as good as McCarty? Maybe not now, but I think he could be a solid starter for years to come. Giants with a number 34 overall pick. I have them selecting Sam Hubbard, defensive end at Ohio State. And with a 35th overall pick, the Browns select Darius Guis, Guis, Juice, whatever you want to pronounce it, running back at LSU. I think with a running back of Darius's caliber, they don't regret passing on Saquon Barkley. And with a 36th overall pick, I have the Indianapolis Colts drafting Sony Mike, Sony Michael or Michelle, however you pronounce that, running back out of Georgia to add to the depth with Marlon Mack and their new guard. This 37th overall pick, we have the Colts with back-to-back picks selecting Maurice Hurst, defensive tackle out of Michigan. Or that says Western Michigan. I'm not sure. I believe Michigan. Good defensive talent. Should help. 38th overall pick, we have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers selecting Ronald Jones, running back at a USC. That should be good for their offense. 39th overall pick, we have the Chicago Bears selecting Brian O'Neill, offensive tackle out of Pitt. Solid, solid addition. For the 40th overall pick, the Broncos select Rasheem Green, defensive end at a USC. The pair with Von Miller should be nice. With the 41st overall pick, we have the Oakland Raiders or soon-to-be Las Vegas Raiders, I should say, selecting Martinez Rankin, offensive tackle out of Mississippi State. Good to protect Derek Carr. For the 42nd overall pick, we have the Miami Dolphins selecting Mike Jasicki, tight end out of Penn State. Good, tall, athletic, big tight end for Ryan Tannehill. And with the 43rd overall pick, we have the New England Patriots selecting Dallas Geodert, tight end out of San Diego State to groom behind Gronkowski when Gronkowski gets ready to retire. And with the 44th overall pick, we have the Washington Redskins selecting Mike Hughes, cornerback out of UCF. Very well could be a first-round talent. Very well could be. And with the 45th overall pick, we have the Packers selecting Lorenzo Carter, outside linebacker out of Georgia, to add another element to that defense. And with the 46th overall pick, we have the Cincinnati Bengals selecting Carlton Davis, cornerback out of Auburn, to replace Pac-Man Jones. And with a 47th overall pick, I believe the Arizona somehow nabbed their backup quarterback and developmental project of the future. Mason Rudolph, cornerback, quarterback out of Oklahoma State. With a 48th overall pick, I have the Los Angeles Chargers selecting Justin Reed, safety out of Stanford, improving the ever-evolving defense into a very scary threat. And with a 49th overall pick, I have the Colts selecting Ronnie Harrison, safety out of Alabama, a ver- another very capable safety prospect in this class. There's a man- there's many. And with a 50th overall pick, I have the Dallas Cowboys selecting Jesse Bates, free safety out of Wake Forest. Another very good prospect. Also instantly improves the Dallas Cowboys defense. And with a 51st overall pick, I have the Detroit Lions selecting Christian Kirk, wide receiver out of Texas A&M. Does give Matthew Stafford another target. They're, his wide receiver is currently getting older. I think you can play him in the slot or at least a number one. Who knows? With the number 52 overall pick, I have the Ra- Baltimore Ravens selecting James Washington, wide receiver out of Oklahoma State. Good depth there, even though they haven't had luck with wide receivers as of late. And with a 53rd overall pick, I have the Bills selecting Deshaun Hand, defensive tackle out of Alabama. With the 54th overall pick, I have the Chiefs selecting Braden Smith, guard out of Auburn. Definitely a good player for Kareem Hunt and Patrick Mahomes. 55th overall pick, I have the Carolina Panthers selecting Arden Key, defensive end out of LSU. Improving that defense, just like I said from the first round. With the 56th overall pick, I have the Bills selecting Trenton Thompson, defensive tackle out of Georgia. With the 57th overall pick, I have the Tennessee Titans selecting Mark Andrews, tight end out of Oklahoma. With the 58th overall pick, I have the Atlanta Falcons selecting Billy Price, guard out of Ohio State. With the 59th overall pick, I have the 49ers selecting Rashad Penny from San Diego State. With the 60th overall pick, I have the Pittsburgh Steelers Selecting Micah Kaiser, inside linebacker out of Virginia to pair with their first-round draft pick. Should be a good linebacking core. And with a 61st overall pick, I had the Jacksonville Jaguars selecting Nathan Shepard, defensive tackle out of Fort Hyas State. 
improve the depth on their defense. 62nd overall pick at the Minnesota Vikings, selecting DJ Shark, wide receiver out of LSU. Decent combine. Decent combine. Good depth at the position as well. And with a 63rd overall pick, I have the Patriots selecting Harrison Phillips to add deep at defensive tackle out of Stanford. And with the last pick in the second round, I have the Browns selecting Dante Jackson, cornerback out of LSU, to improve that great young defense that they have. And that concludes round two.